the Consumer Price Index. The Consumer Price Index measures the changes in retail prices for goods and services. In the U.S., it is considered the number one indicator for inflation, and it is one of the main economic reports the Fed uses when determining when to change interest rates. I'll post a link for the report in the text next to the video. If you've not done so already, you may want to stop this video and watch my video on inflation in the Understanding Economics section. We'll wait here until you get back. Welcome back. The Consumer Price Index measures a weighted basket of about 200 commonly purchased goods and services. Each month, the Bureau of Labor Statistics determines the retail prices for these items and compares them to the prices from the previous month to gauge the change in the average cost of living. The data is then grouped into two separate indexes. The first is the CPIW for wage earners and clerical workers. The second is the CPIU for all urban workers. The data most economists pay attention to, the main statistics reported in the media, and the information used in this video come from the CPIU report. The CPIW report for wage earners covers about one third of the working population and is used for things like cost of living adjustments and social security payments. For each category, an index number is provided that is an ongoing, continuous percent of change in prices from an original start date. For the main categories, this is 1982 to 1984. In other words, every month they compare prices to what the average prices were in 1982 or 1984 and then add to, or subtract from, the total percentage of change since then. So again, they add up the prices in the basket of goods, compare it to the prices from 1982 to 1984, generate an index percent of change in prices, and then compare that index number to the previous month's index number. They take the difference between those two numbers, which is 0 0.738, and then they divide it by the previous month's index number. So it's 0 0.78738 divided by 215.949 for a change of 0 0.3 unadjusted. And looking at the example back on the report, here's the number right here, 0 0.3 unadjusted. And also, these numbers are provided seasonally adjusted for things like weather conditions. The CPI report is issued monthly about three weeks after the month being reported. The report contains one main table, A, and several follow-up tables. There are also several short summaries of the data for table A that contain the most important statistics. The two main statistics reported in the media are the seasonally adjusted percent change for the total index from the previous month and the non-seasonally adjusted 12-month percent change of the total index from the year before. The first is the one-month total change in prices for goods and services throughout the country adjusted for seasonal factors such as weather conditions. This is the seasonally adjusted inflation rate for one month. The second is the total change in prices for goods and services for an entire year. This change is not adjusted for seasonal factors, so it more accurately reflects the total change of prices consumers pay. In other words, this is the total inflation rate for a whole year. In addition, perhaps equally important, is the seasonally adjusted rate of change for all items less food and energy. In this section, items related to food and energy are removed. Because of the volatility of prices of items in these two categories, some economists feel that by removing these items, one gets a more accurate view of inflation. This category is often referred to as core CPI. As I mentioned before, there are several follow-up tables at the end of the report. The first table is the change of prices for the entire basket of goods broken down into detail which shows the change of price for individual sections, sectors, and commodities. The second table is the same thing, only the prices and index numbers have been seasonally adjusted. The third table is the change of prices broken down by different areas. One table worth mentioning is Table 7, the Chain Consumer Price Index. 
This report attempts to take into account substitutions consumers make when prices change in the regular consumer price index basket of goods. For example, if the price of an item in a CPI basket of goods rises substantially, and a large percentage of consumers stops buying that item and substitutes a different, cheaper item not in the basket of goods, the change CPI will attempt to take this change into its calculations. Some economists feel that this gives a more accurate view of the real change in the cost of living. The rest of the tables belong to the CPIW category. The CPI report has its problems as well. For instance, the list of goods and the weights for each good in other words, how much that good affects the total index, has to be changed from time to time to allow for changes in consumer spending habits. This makes comparing historical data difficult. Also, there is some controversy with the CPI. The first is that, in some cases, the weights of the basket of goods does not reflect the real cost to consumers. An example of that is the weight for medical care. Most people pay more than the percentage that is allotted. In fact, some say the weights are adjusted unfairly so the government can manipulate the data to make it look like inflation rates are much lower than they actually are. So that's the Consumer Price Index, the largest inflation indicator and one of the largest economic reports released each month. Like most economic reports, this report only takes a few minutes to read, it's only a few pages long. I would recommend that people spend the time to read these reports themselves rather than listen to their favorite pundit or TV personality give their opinion of the reports as the reports are pretty basic, fairly simple to understand, and one can generate their own opinion just as easily as the media can tell them what their opinion is.